Hi, how's it going? We are here to cover the very first book in a series of little uh, study sessions, a book club basically that I'm starting here. And the very first book we're going to do is Essential Poker Math by Alan Hardin. And I figure this is a pretty good place to begin. It has basically covers a lot of basics and uh, we can just start with a solid understanding of math. And so a little bit of background, Alan Hardin uh, is I believe it is he's an IT uh, security expert, but he also has a passion for poker. And so he's written this first book. Uh, we're going to do the expanded edition, but he's written this book to cover a lot of the basic poker mass. He started uh, Microgrinder Poker School. You can find some more links on him. He has a lot of Udemy courses, and his website is Microgrinder. And so this book is basically covering the basics. It's not like a GTO book. Um, it's just kind of to teach people about the basics of the poker mass. So the first chapter that we get into is the importance of math. Um, there's been two styles in poker and for the longest time it was math was more of like a back seat. Um, it used to be about like tells and reads and trying to figure out your villain and what they were doing. <clears throat> you know they're kind of like legendary stories of Doyle Brunson actually dealing out hands uh, you know, to learn just probabilities over and over and over again. And so you see what's happened in a few decades removed from there. We're now at an age of where we have GTO solvers. But fundamentally, the game is still very, very much math related um, because we're always trying to make positive EV decisions and minimize our losses. So um, how do we do that? We can do that today. The best players are the math players. They're the GTO guys or the ones who studied. They know where all that little extra bit of EV and range is. And kind of like the feel players, um, the highly exploitive people, the people who go by tendencies, that still exists. Um, that is very much like the art to poker. Um, but that's basically taking a backseat to just the you make tens of thousands of decisions in poker. And so that can't all be art, right? Those have to be mathematical decisions based in solid kind of understanding of probabilities and odds. And so basically uh, <clears throat> it is a conclusion of a lot of people and the author of this that without math, you cannot really advance up the stakes. Um, you'll just kind of be squandering around forever. So math is super important. This is not a GTO book, but knowing kind of the basic mass will really, really help you out. And as you find out, um, you know, it's always just good to have a refresher on some of this stuff. So chapter two just gets into some fundamental concepts, which we'll cover here. Uh, you know, treating this like a beginner thing, we basically need to know what position is. So we have uh, in like a six max game, you have the small blind, big blind, under the gun, your middle position, your cutoff, and your button. So um, position is both absolute and relative, where everything that I just mentioned, those are the absolute positions, small blind to, butt blind, uh, to uh, button. <clears throat> and then you can have relative positions in the hand, who is first to act, um, who acts out of position, in position, and such. The basic thing that helps identify relative position um, later on is when we're talking about like, heroes and villains, what is the relation, the position in relation to hero? is what we want to know. Are we in position? Are we out of position? And then once we start figuring out uh, these kind of basic fundamental concepts, the real kind of advancement in poker is when you start thinking about ranges instead of your exact hand. You have a range of hands. You know, you don't just have the two cards in your hands. You potentially have hundreds of combinations in a spot. And so poker is a game of how ranges interact. And sometimes they're tight and narrow, and sometimes they're super wide. And it really adds a lot. It adds a ton to the math. Um, but it's a very, very fundamental thing to advance your understanding of poker, to start talking about and thinking about all the ranges of hands that you and your villain can have in um, a spot. And then bet sizes. Uh, bet sizes are kind of obvious. Um, they can be in absolute terms, in terms of like big blinds and dollars, or they can be in percentages of pots. And that, it's never really going to change. You know, a 33% uh, flop continuation bet is going to still be like a 33%. On the river, it's going to be the same um, the same percentage size, even though the, the bet amount may be different. 
So we just have different ways of talking about that sizes and the author wanted to make sure that was understood. There's absolute sizes and kind of relative sizes and how they interact, which leads us to something that is a bit more important because when we're making bets, we want to understand our effective stack sizes. Now, effective stack size is the floor of the most amount of money that can go into the pot, which is determined by whoever has the least amount of money um, going into the hand. So if you're playing with a short stacker who only has 40 BBs and you see a flop for three BBs, um, the effective stack size on that flop, even if you have them well covered with your you know, your normal buy-in is 37 BBs, is 40 to start minus the three pre-flop. So an effective stack size is 37 BBs. And we should always be thinking in effective stack sizes. Uh, it becomes super important to figure out plannings for the hands and just to understand villain. We're not always gonna be basic 100 big blind poker. So paying attention to effective stack size is incredibly important. Because then, <clears throat> one of the basic math things that we kind of figure out, and this is basically our uh, first time we're actually kind of really doing math, is to find out our stack to pot ratio, which is taking our effective stack and you divide it by the size of the pot. Stack to pot ratios are extremely important, um, given that uh, <clears throat> kind of dictates what you should be doing with different classifications and, and types of hands. When the stack to pot ratio is small, um, say between zero and two, we just value hands a lot differently than we would when it's higher, like seven plus. So for example, in the ranges of zero to two, um, a stack to pot ratio, we're just gonna have to go with hands that are like over pairs and two pairs and top pair, even though the stack may be deeper, uh, we may be playing with more money. Um, if, you know, basically we have a smaller stack to pot ratio, things like top pairs and over pairs are just, they become so valuable uh, that it's kind of foolish to get rid of them. Um, when we see a more medium and average size stack to pot ratio of somewhere between like three and six, uh, we can be really more excited about playing hands like two pairs and flushes and sets and uh, things that are like non-nut are still good. Well, you know, we're still very excited about all these classes of hands, um, but we really want to be kind of moving away from just single pair. We want to be moving into a higher class of value, which is, you know, two pair plus, uh, flushes, straights, anything like that um, is very exciting. But all that is to say, once we get to a deeper stack to pot ratio of seven plus, uh, we basically just want to get nutted hands. You know, if we decide to get it in at this deeper stack ratio against another person, what are we expecting them to turn over? Certainly kind of like not ace high. So we want to have hands that are incredibly strong or robust or have like redraws to all these best hands because once you start putting that much money in, um, your opponent's range is going to be greatly condensed into hands that are extremely valuable. And so... That kind of just covers the first two chapters. Uh, part of this is just doing a brief introduction, getting myself familiar with this. I'm gonna be doing a couple chapters every week. I'm gonna start it just as a recording for now. I'm gonna be posting this on Mondays. I appreciate any feedback that you may have, but this is basically um, just to start pumping out some more content. Uh, you know, just creating basically a nice repository of some nice poker information here. And so this is the first book review, um, the first two chapters of Essential Poker Math by Alton Hardin.